Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a story in which the sister of our OP gave the car dealership a hard time. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Only the CEO can authorize loaner vehicles? Okay. We've had a bunch of family issues lately. My mom is disabled, stroke, and my dad had a traumatic brain injury a month ago, leaving my sister as the primary caretaker of her household and my parents. I live about two hours away and help when I can. My sister has one car that can haul her family, hubby and three kids, and she relies on it every day to take the kiddos to school and pick them up. Sunday night, she was coming back from getting groceries when her car just died. Like, dead dead. Not starting. If it did start, it'd run about three seconds and clip off. Her husband and a nice policeman pushed it off the highway and later they had it towed back to their house. Monday, she calls the dealership she bought it from. The truck has about 75,000 miles on it, but it's an older model, like an 05, I think. Edit. My sister corrected me here. It's a 2010 with a 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. When she speaks to the service tech, she asks about a loaner vehicle to get her kids back and forth and take my mom to doctor appointments and such. They told her that they only give loaners to people with 2021 vehicles, and the only person who can authorize the loaner is the CEO himself. I guess they thought they could scare my sister into shutting up about it, but they didn't realize that they were dealing with a frazzled mama who's been dealing with doctors and hospitals for a month because of my dad's injury. One phone call to the CEO later, she's in his office writing a report about the service tech and signing papers on her loaner vehicle, which the CEO did mention they had five or six to choose from. He also didn't know any policy about having to go through him to authorize a loaner. As she was leaving, she heard the CEO on the intercom calling for the service tech to come to his office. Bottom line, don't mess with frazzled mamas who are at the end of their rope wondering how to get her kids to school and her mom to the hospital to visit her dad. She might just do exactly as you suggest. And our second story. I hope you win the dispute, lady. The first year I started working at the paint store I still currently work at, I went from general run-of-the-mill part-time employee to keyholder employee within months of just starting the job. Probably a little too quick, but hey, money got better, so why complain? In the area I work in, when it gets colder, business slows down for paint. So from November to generally April, only one person will generally work the store on the weekends. Not a big deal, most of the time you do fine. Well, only weeks after being promoted to my new position, I was working the weekend by myself. Friday, a lady came in. My manager and I took turns helping her. She picked out a color, then asked what type of paint she should use. We suggested using our medium grade as it covers well and wouldn't be too expensive. She agrees and says it has to be in an eggshell finish. We tell her that's fine. The paint we suggested comes in a satin finish which is identical to the eggshell finish you're looking for. She says that's okay as long as it's eggshell. She purchases 10 gallons and is on her way. Flash forward to Sunday, Sunday's our slowest day of the week by far, in the winter it's even slower. We had a sale that weekend on paint. No big deal, we have sales all the time. I pull up to the store and lo and behold, she's waiting at the front door for me to unlock the door to walk in. Not a good sign. I pull around back so I won't have to argue with her why she can't come in yet and go in through the back door. I get everything set up and ready to go, open the door, and the first words out of her mouth are, there's something wrong with your paint. Carry it back in so you can fix it. Me. I apologize for that, ma'am. I'll see what's wrong. I use a dolly to roll the paint back in and ask her what's wrong. Old lady. Well, I told you people on Friday that this paint has to be eggshell finish. It says satin. I don't want satin. I want eggshell. Me. We explained to you that this certain product doesn't come in an eggshell finish, but a satin, and also that our satin finish is identical to eggshell. Old lady. You don't understand. I want eggshell. That's satin. It isn't what I want. So I show her our display of finishes, which shows our satin and eggshell both on the same card. No difference in appearance whatsoever. Old lady. I don't care what that display shows. It doesn't say eggshell, so it isn't what I want. Now either you give me what I want or I'll dispute my purchase with my credit card company and get you all fired for your awful service. Me. I apologize, but I'm unable to do anything but sell you a new product that says eggshell on it. 
I can't return the paint as it's been tinted to a color. Old lady, I'm not buying more paint from you. Are you stupid? You'll give me the product I originally asked for or I'll dispute my purchase and get my money back that way. Me. I'm sorry, but I'm unable to do anything else. Old lady. Well, then you guys just lost a customer and the money that I paid for this paint. Carry it back to my car so I can leave. Technically her paint, and of course I have to be nice, because retail. I use the dolly to wheel it back to her car. Old lady. I hope you're happy with yourself. I'm getting this paint for free because I'm going to dispute this, and I always win whenever I dispute my purchases. Not a single time have I not gotten my money back. Me. Well, I certainly hope you win this time as well. Have a good day. I don't know if she won. Don't care. Because the purchase was maybe for $200 and doesn't affect us at all. She's by far the worst experience I've had working here, but there are some that come close. Eh, credit card companies aren't that stupid. They'll investigate, and once they call and find out that she bought the wrong paint, she'll lose. Her mistake, her problem. And our last story. A-hole tries to scam my friend, but messes with the wrong people. In the late summer of 2014, my housemates, let's call him Mark, girlfriend, let's call her Julia, is looking for a new apartment. One day, Julia comes into our apartment and happily announces that she found a place. Apparently, a loose friend of hers, let's call him Aaron, for, is looking for a new housemate since his current tenant was moving. She checked out the place and took a look at the room she was going to rent, and it really appeals to her. A few days later, they draw up a rental agreement with a small deposit and a normal cancellation period. They both signed the contract, and at that point, she was due to move in about 10 days later. Aaron was very adamant about her transferring the deposit before moving in, which was kind of weird, but not worrisome because they had a contract. The days go by, and she doesn't hear a lot from him. When she asks about the keys and when exactly she can move in, he's very dodgy, until the day she's supposed to move. He says that he's not in town and he'll call tomorrow. Two days later, he actually calls back saying that his roommate left a mess and they have to renovate a bit. She asks him to see her room because she's now technically renting it and she wants to plan the layout to which he responds that he doesn't have time because he's busy. At that point, she told Mark and me what happened because the lease of her old apartment was about to run out and it got our attention since he could hardly be renovating the room and not be home long enough for a visit. Mark calls him and tells him that he has to give her the keys, which he ignores and hangs up instead. After that, he stops answering his phone. Luckily, Julia hadn't transferred the deposit yet, because at least subconsciously, the whole thing seemed fishy to her. We sat down in the kitchen and tried to think about what to do next. After doing some digging on social media, we find Aaron's roommate and confront him about the situation. He's very surprised about all this and told us he hasn't moved out and wasn't planning to. We're shocked about this since Julia would have to move out in a couple days. After letting everything sink in and having a couple beers, we devise a plan. Julia's in a position where she's able to check people's credit scores using the information Aaron provided on the lease. We find out he's way in debt. We write up a termination without notice for and coordinate with his luckily very cooperative roommate. The next evening, Mark and I are sitting in Aaron's kitchen with his roommate, having tea and waiting for him. He comes home greets his roommate as if nothing were out of the ordinary and wants to introduce himself to us. Mark calmly yet very firmly says, we're not here because of him, we're here for you, to which Aaron is very surprised. You might want to sit down for this, I add. As he sits down, Mark explains that a certain person called Julia and tried to rent from him. As the nature of our visit became clear to Aaron, he became visibly nervous and almost stopped speaking altogether. We began explaining to him that he'd broken his contract and gave him the termination, which we had him sign and gave him a copy. We were pretty much done when his roommate had the bright idea to use Aaron's current mindset of say yes and sign to have him sign a termination without notice as well that he quickly drew up. Aaron didn't have to agree, but he probably didn't think about it. We didn't threaten him once, we only told him off very sternly and laid out the legal situation. After that, we left, and on the way out, I whispered, you might want to check your credit score into his ear so that he knew who was responsible for what was about to come. We told his girlfriend about the story, and on a hunch, said she might want to check her finances. Turns out he'd stolen money from her. After finding out, she promptly broke up with him. She told his friends about it, and they cast him out of their circle. A month later, he was thrown out by the landlord because he got wind of the attempted scam and his debt, along with Aaron not being able to pay rent 
because he couldn't find a new roommate in time. Julia moved in with us for two to three weeks until she found an apartment and no other harm was done. Those weeks were actually a lot of fun. Last I heard, Aaron was forced to move in with his parents who were very disappointed in him and quitting his job because his parents lived too far away from his workplace and he didn't own a car. Wow, lost his apartment, roommate, girlfriend, circle of friends, and his job. You turned his life into a country song. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.